mercy. Woo! Hello, everyone. I am Coco. I am your muse. And this is the one, the only, yes. often imitated, never duplicated, inimitable. I got no more words. Who imitated it? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Not a damn soul. <laughs> Venus Kleppe. We out here. And we're we back out with season two, y'all. Yeah. And yeah, no, nobody has imitated us. I was like, oh shit, we got imitators? It's just a cliche. Let me Google them. But yeah, we're back, you know? Yes. We in the place, we in the building because Very of excited. you, back by popular demand. And today we want to talk to the folks who, like us, live in cities that don't have a huge black population. Yeah. So in case y'all didn't know, tell them where we live, Muse. We live in Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> where the population of black people is three. <laughs> Uh, me, Coco, and producer Brian. Well, actually, no, he's, he's he's actually Caribbean, which don't count. It's, oh. it's us two and my dog, Sade. Damn. <laughs> I'm kidding. Caribbean absolutely counts. I'm but no, totally like the, the, back, the black population here still isn't double digits yet. It's what? Shut up. It's not. No, it's not 10%. Oh, percentage points. No, yeah. But it's double digits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percentage general, wise. Yeah, we don't have a double digit thousands. percentage. Yeah, we're definitely all over because there is the military. There's Air Force and the um, the base in Sierra Vista and all that yeah. good stuff. But like people say it's three percent. I think it's more like seven or eight percent. I really three? do. Yeah, it's definitely six or seven. Yeah, because we don't be responding to the census. We're no. not trying to get picked up by but the government. But it is coming around. So we want to hear from you. You know, if you're watching right now, tell us in the comments where you live. Yeah. Um, especially if or it's if you're a place. thinking about moving. Yeah, that's a big. So one. we can connect y'all, mm-hmm. and that's why we're doing this episode because we want to talk to you about how in these less black places mm. you can be the rose that grew from concrete. Oh shit. That's right. You can thrive anyway by building your own black community and joy. Yes. Now, when I say building your own, I don't mean go start a cult. No. What we're saying is building black community, making community with fellow black folks so that you can find that joy. So, like, how did you do that here in Phoenix, Muse? Well, is this me telling my own story? If you like. You don't have to. Um, So, I moved out here, and essentially I moved all the way out to Mesa. Sight unseen, didn't know. I got my whole apartment through email, like... Didn't know anything, and I had a roommate at the time. Wow. Uh, and both of us were coming from, I was coming from the South, she was from Cal- coming from California. Okay. So we didn't know anything. We were just, com- we just knew we had a job, mm-hmm. and we were coming, and then they were like, hey, if you're not wanting to live by yourself, you can, um, these are the other people that got hired, and you can get a roommate. So sight unseen roommate, sight unseen apartment. Wow. wow. Just, just ready to Adventurous. go. Adventurous. Yeah. So, um, moved to Mesa, learned that that was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Don't let anybody tell you to move to... Well, I take that back. I always say move to Central Phoenix first okay. for like a year. Okay. And then go to the outskirts, especially if you move like by yourself. And that's really good advice for probably any city. Any yeah. city, any like metropolitan area. Yeah. Don't do not don't do the, the outskirts, suburban areas. Unless that's, you know, that's where you really, really want to be. Mm-hmm. But if you're like 20, b- below 30, mm-hmm. I would say go to like the, the where it's happening at. So, yeah. you, so that you can like mix and mingle. But um, moved out to Mesa and then um, my first connection with like actual black people. Um, I worked with some, not many. It was mm-hmm. like two black guys, but that was all the black chicken work. Um, and then... I rode the light rail, which is like similar to like a subway or the train in other major cities, but mm-hmm. we call it the light rail here. Mm-hmm. So I was riding the light rail, and on this particular day, these were in my um, church times. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking for a church this particular Sunday morning, and so um, the I went to the gas station. I bought a Cosmopolitan, and I had my Bible in my hand. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't know how long this train ride going to be, so I'm going to just Cosmopolitan read. Magazine? Yeah. For a second, I thought you meant to drink. I was like, what kind of gas station was this? I mean, Cosmo if they magazine. had that, I would have got that too. <laughs> but it was a Cosmo Magazine, and I had the Bible. And so I was on the light rail coming into the city from Mesa, and I was like, I'm going to just stop at the first church I see. Because I had been here for a month, and like in Mississippi terms, that's blasphemy, and I hadn't been to church. With so, your Cosmo magazine. Got with my, with my Cosmo. Okay. I didn't know how long it was going to take. <laughs> and I wasn't going to read the Bible the whole time. <laughs> so... <laughs> Got it. I was reading the magazine, and then while I was there, 
when I was on the light road, this um the black guy, this black guy came and he saw me with the Bible and he was like, um, are you looking for like a black church? And I was like, yeah, I really? am. He just actually. asked you straight out like that. He did. Yeah, maybe he was an angel. Yeah, he 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 told me where to go, and um, he told me how to get there. So I had to ride the light rail into downtown, hop across the other way, and come back up because mm-hmm. um, the light rail system wasn't that developed at at this point in time. Because um, you came in like nineteen seventy. <laughs> You'll just make yourself laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> and so I had to cross over the little thing and then come back up. And so I found a church. And at this time, it's like 1230. Mm-hmm. Like, I started the journey at 10. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm, I know that feeling. So 1230, I walk in. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to this church anyway. The man told me this is where I was at. And if it's a, if it's a black church, they'll probably end about 1 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So I got about 30 minutes to at least just see mm-hmm. some black people. Right. So I right. walked in. I sat in the very last pew in the back. And I was like, oh, black people. <laughs> There's so many black people. And see, let, let's start right there for a second, if you don't mind. Yeah. Because, like, for, for some people who don't live in areas like this, they're listening right now like, what? What do you even mean? I can't imagine. Yeah. And I get it. I, I get it, sis. I get it, bro. Like, I grew up in South Carolina in a 55% black county. I then went to Howard University in Washington, D.C. pre-gentrification, or at least the worst of the gentrification. Uh, so it was still Chocolate City. Mm-hmm. I then moved to Harlem. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I have lived a pretty blackity black existence. And so I, I would Literally have listened same. to what you're saying. I would have been like, you were excited to see black people. Like, yeah. come on, let's, let's be no. real. You just, yeah. you're weird. But honestly, when you live in a place like Phoenix... You know what I mean? Um, name most of the cities, really, in America. Um, Lansing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just actually, no, East Lansing is pretty black. So I'm having trouble thinking of cities right now because yeah. I'm a few glasses in. But, yeah. you know, any, most of the cities that are not major cities, right? And then even some of the major cities, you just are not going to see a whole bunch of black people. Yeah. And when you think about major cities, you talk about like the top five to eight cities in America. That leaves a whole bunch of other cities and towns and municipalities. It does. Where you can go for days at a time and see like maybe one or two black people, if see. any. Yep, that's real. So you walked that's in that real. church and saw all the black folks that I you did. hadn't been seeing And it was like, town. I can't remember what kind of Sunday it was, but they was in fatigues and they had the big little uh, flag. I can't remember what like the whole program was about because again, I was like 30 minutes like from, it was the like the, from the end yeah <laughs> but it was like a whole production and i was like oh okay snap so then um i went back again and this time like the men's choir were singing okay. and i was like oh snap and i they they were singing um oh it was some old school so i can't remember what it was but it made me feel like i was at home or whatever yeah and i was like oh, okay so then i went ahead and joined mm-hmm. um but at this point in time i still don't know anybody like i'm not I'm still, I'm just going, coming from Mesa to the church and then going back. And, um, and so then this dude that, um, I met at the church trying to holler, whatever, mm-hmm. but like real talk, he, he introduced me to some dope women. So I was asking him like, so where do I go to the hair store? Like, what do mm-hmm. I do? What do I, you know, what is this? Where's that? Blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, I'm going to this event that one of my um, friends is putting on. Um, it was at 1130 at the restaurant and she was having like a little, a conversation party mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. So I went there, and um, at the end of it, he introduced me to, to her, and then she introduced me to her other three friends. They were all Deltas. Nice. Like, the Deltas been looking out for me. I had a Delta scholarship at Jackson State. Aww. Coco's a Delta. My mama's a Delta. My favorite auntie and my cousin's a Delta. Y'all be looking out for your girl, but I ain't. I'm, I'm good, oh, though. Oh, oh, double O-P. Yes. So those women took me in, like, literally took me in. Mm. And so... Um, Washed you off, dusted you off. They dusted me you off. Fleece spray. Yes. I got here, and I was excited <laughs> to go to... Look, listen. I was excited to go to Arizona Mills. I was like, I got my nails down at Arizona Mills. Mm-hmm. And it was like, Arizona Mills? Mm-hmm. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> I was like, but why? Arizona Mills is so nice. It was like, ma'am, no. Yeah. Come, let, let us take you to Scottsdale. <laughs> like, let's, like, I know you, you came from the country and then you think Arizona Mills is like a step up, but let's just step yeah. you right on up out mm-hmm. of all of that. <laughs> so, um, they, so, um, one of them, um, she did sewings and stuff. This is when I was heavy into the weaves and things too. Mm-hmm. Um, did my sewings. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one um, was um, had other connections because she was in like her master's program at ASU, so she knew other black people okay. that were here and um, or whatever. And um, so from there, like I literally like 
just grew and it was yeah. really 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 great and then I left and went back to Mississippi for a year and then I came back mm -hmm. but when I came back this time I was working in radio okay. so now I'm, I'm going to the concerts I'm going to the clubs I'm going to where all the black people at so okay. it so was what, a different experience what would, you the credit with, what would you credit with being your biggest like source of, build, of building you know black community like what organization or setting was like your mm. plug for getting into the black community? Um, a first, well, it, it would have had to been the church first off. Okay. Because um, when I came back, then that's, ex that's exactly where I went back to. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I was able to kind of um, cling to like um, where I was able to go because of clients. Yeah. So, work. yeah. So any of the promotional Radio. stuff, advertising, marketing stuff, I was able to go there and then kind of. Um, bridge into that gotcha. and then meeting more people and meeting new people and then that's when i started getting more involved in like the community yeah. and organizations and all that stuff but phx soul was like right up at the top um, phxsoul.com phx shout out soul. to the com. website yeah. yeah and then um the phoenix new times helped me out i used to like thumb through it mm -hmm. and read like what to do because mm -hmm. again i'm on the light uh on the light rail again when i came back to mm -hmm. um so I just ride the light rail into Mill Avenue mm -hmm. um, in Tempe or whatever and just figure out what the hell it was to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say for me, I came out here with Brian. Um, my husband's job, my then fiance's job transferred him out here. So I took a leap of faith and came out. But I would say for me, the biggest plug was probably actually the Urban League. Mm -hmm. Um, and for folks who don't know what the Urban League is, we about to talk about it in just a second. Also, shame on you. Who are you? But um, <laughs> the Urban League is like a um, civil rights and economic empowerment mm -hmm. black organization. But, you know, here locally in Phoenix, getting involved with that exposed me to a lot more like young black professionals, mm -hmm. so to speak. And that's basically how I met most of my friends that yeah. I have to this day. Yeah. Um, to this day out here in the Valley. Yeah, I think that so. definitely... Um that was definitely like a, a game changer for me. I'll mm -hmm, say that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Just being around like other young professionals. Because by this point, I just knew like all churchy people. And I was like, yeah. right. And I think too, the big thing I want people to understand as we get into it, this episode is, it's not necessarily just find the black people, right? Yeah, no. Because y'all know, like we know, like Trump don't know, not all black people are the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you ask people like Trump and some of these other uninitiated um <laughs> troglodyte philistines oh. about um, black people oh, and they think, Ooh. wait i need to look that word up and make sure it's not like it's a slur a, now it's, it's, it's correct <laughs> okay. i don't know if it's a slur now it's... <laughs> uh but yeah you ask them about black people and they're like oh all black people are living in a slum they are you know um uh, bed winches for slave masters oh, and <laughs> just like these crazy outlandish perceptions mm -hmm. but we know that black people come in all like all kinds of styles all yeah. kinds of swags and interests so you got your crowd that might be like your goths and your alternative black folk you know that's out here doing the fist pump mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got you know you got your black folks that's out here kind of churchy like you yeah. said your folks that's like the strivers, young professionals. You got your power to the people, activist, organizer, community. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. So what's messed up is when you try to define blackness super narrowly and then you get, you know, you move to a new city and you just think, oh, well, if I find the black people, I'm good. Yeah. Now you got to find your tribe. Yeah, And definitely. I think, like, because the funny thing is that when I moved here, I actually had a college friend that lived out here and she put me on, hooked me up with her friends. I'm still friends with them to this day. Um, but in terms of like who I ended up becoming sort of like probably what's going to be lifelong friendships with, I found them through sort of our shared interests. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for people that are listening right now, you, you just moved to Topeka, Kansas. Ooh. You just moved to Peoria, Illinois. Hmm. You just moved to, give me another one, Bellevue, Washington. What's another one, Producer Darrell? Portland, Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Lake Minnetonka? <laughs> Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New oh, Mexico. Yeah. Excellent one. You know what I mean? Pacific Palisades. You know, you've moved <laughs> to one of the Kabillion places in America where there is, by and large, not a lot of black people. Yeah. You're sitting there right now, you're listening to our podcast, or you're about to move to one of those places because you just got... A, a promotion or opportunity offered through work or a new job and you're trying to figure out what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. We got you. Yeah. Music Coco. We're going to give you some tips, right? And also give you some understanding of why this is important. Because, you know, 
when you connect to community, when you find your tribe, it's not just about having people to 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 be on the gram with. Mm -hmm. It's not just about Seriously. you know having people to floss with. You know, and we cute, hot girl summer. Like yeah. do that, yes. But you also need people who are going to feed your soul, be your support system, yeah. be your emergency contact. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. need be, if you're in a place where you just have no family and no previous friends, people who can let you know who the local scammers are in town. Yeah. Let you know who the F boys are. I'm going to try not to say the F word today. I don't know why. I just Fuck boys. Like it. Okay. There it is. Say it one more time. Fuck boys. Let, you got to know who those are and trust. <laughs> you know from your hometown. People know who they are in mm -hmm. town. Everybody knows the dude as well as the female that is out here, you know, spreading their seed to populate the world. <laughs> People know who that is, and you want to be able to be warned so you're not out here looking like a sucker. Yeah. Um, you also want to know, like, about the workplaces mm -hmm. in town. You want to know what's the bad place to work, what's the good place to work. Yeah. And the thing we usually ask, what's the good area in town to live in? Yep. You want to know that, too. Where's, you know, where are people getting charged too much for their money? Where are the break-ins going down? Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. This stuff is important. And the only way for you to get a real perspective on that stuff is if you are talking to people who care about your life and your interests. Yeah. And more than likely, those people are going to look like you even more so. Yep. And another one, I can't believe I almost forgot this. You need to know where the good schools are. Mm -hmm. Right, you need to know where your kids can go, and it's not going to be a race war, yep. and it's not going to be crazy cops on yep. campus, and where the teachers care, and where the curriculum is rigorous, yep. and your kids are reading, and literacy is emphasized. Like, okay, I'm going way too deep, but no, I mean that's good. I, I ain't gonna say that. Say it. It ain't like they're gonna listen to you because they're still gonna go to the white centric schools because they're better anyway. <laughs> Well, not our audience. Our audience is better than that. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> our audience is going to go with I pray that you will make a better decision. Make a good decision by <laughs> listening to your black community so you can find yes. your black joy. Because yes. that's all it's about. It's really about being able to have joy. And no man is an island. No person is an island. Mm -hmm. We're not made to do life alone. Yeah. So, you know, this we want to talk to you today just about what you can do, regardless of what city you're in, right, to build that community and find that joy so you don't have to do life alone. Absolutely. And then once you find it and then you kind of, um, you make it into what you want it to be. You yes. don't have to um, go the route of the people that you meet. So even though I got linked up with the four, um, the four women, I feel like uh, Nina Simone. <laughs> I am. I can't remember none of the names. He um, so even though I got hooked up, linked up with the, the, the four women, like I was still, I'm still going to live Ebony's life. Right. So, um, Imagine. they're able to kind of, I mean, <laughs> you still have, you have a source of like community or mm -hmm. source of, um, being able to relate. And mm -hmm. then you have the opportunities where I was still riding a light rail, going into different, um, yes. like different events and stuff like that. Um, to figure out where else can I go at the same time, like figuring out who I was at this, you know, too, because yeah. it was just me. It wasn't any family or friends that I moved out here with. So it was a great time to just, who is Ebony? Yeah. yeah. You still got to explore and not get stuck. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. Even if you're listening to this episode and you live in a predominantly black community, you should still keep listening because this applies to predominantly white workplaces, um, or I'm going to say non-black, predominantly non-black communities. Um, predominantly non-black fields. You may be in a field where you travel a lot and you're not really in circles, you know, with people of color and black people. Just anytime you find yourself in an environment where you kind of on your own. I got it in. You did. <laughs> I think we just going to slide in there eventually. Ah, so let's get into it. We got a, yeah. another about a minute left in this segment to sure. tease for the folks. I think the biggest one, I'm just going to go ahead and get them out of the way, is two things that you just do off top if you black and on your own okay. in a new community legacy civil rights organizations and greek organizations if okay. you happen to be greek if you're not greek don't you roll up to no delta meeting or no aka meeting or no zeta meeting or no sg road meeting talking about music coco said this is where i can find community you can say coco oh, at least she's greek <laughs> <laughs> I was counting and I stopped. Ugh. Don't you roll up to no meeting talking about. I'm going to just sit like this for the rest of the segment because I got to cleanse my soul in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Um, don't you roll up to no meeting talking about music Coco told me. No, no, no. You got to have membership. 
in those organizations. But yeah. legacy civil rights organizations, you can just kind of roll up to. And, and when we say civil legacy civil rights organizations, we talking about what? It's about Urban League. Yeah. Talking about um, National Council of Negro Women. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, NAACP. NAACP. It's the, it's all Dundetta. all regions of them, depending on where you live at, and. Um, What's the one with the 100? The 100 black women. 100 black or women. Or 100 black men. Or 100 black men, yeah. yeah. And, and um, Urban League, you know, I think is a little bit lesser known, but basically you can look up National Urban League and find the affiliate in your city. Yep. And, yeah. and they usually will have like a young professional mm-hmm. subsect of it as well. Yeah, NAACP will have like their youth clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you have kids or teenagers, a lot of these organizations have like youth arms to what they do. Like Delta has Delta Gyms. And that's for, like, young girls to come and get mentor. Um, the Kappas have, like, Kappa Bows, B-E-A-U-S, depending on your city. The Alphas have something, too. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, and it probably depends on what city you're in with that. Yeah, it's Alpha Esquire. Alpha Esquire, yeah. Alpha. Delta Gems is national, though. <clears throat> I think that <laughs> every organization has well, some type of youth initiative. Yeah, for I sure. I Oh, <laughs> shut through the heart. So, yeah. So, you know, basically off top, you check that box. But if that's not really your vibe, we're going to go a little bit deeper in the next segment to talk about where you can go, yep. okay, to get that good, hot, soul food plate full of community. Mm. Um, de- regardless oh, community. of where you are. Okay. Yeah, just as a metaphor. Okay. Um, wherever okay. you might be. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> So, I thought yeah. you were going with food, and I was like, no, we can't tell you where to get no food. <laughs> but hey, let me plug this app called Eat Okra, E-A-T-O-K-R-A, Eat Okra. They paying? No, they're not paying, but I'm going to just plug them just off, you know, off the strength. No? Okay, well, they, they, list, well, black they, owned, they list black-owned restaurants. That's all oh, I'm okay, saying. Cool. I'm not going to plug them no more. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a good app. So tune in <laughs> in the next segment, and we're going to talk to you about all the different places, including some I know y'all haven't thought of, yeah. that can get you plugged into your black joy. Next segment, stay here with us on Venus Black Bat. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Venus Clapback. Are y'all there? We didn't realize it. I'm Coco. I'm your muse. And today's topic is, will you be my neighbor? The rose that grew from concrete. (laughs) As your neighbor. As my neighbor. Building community and black joy. Obviously, we've built black joy right here in this room, and we want you to have it too, even if you live in a city that is uh, a little bit light on the black folks in terms of population. So let's get into it. Last uh, segment, you talked, Muse, about how you um, were patrolling for men on the light rail. (laughs) At that time, at that time, young lady, the only man I knew and loved was the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was not... I was not strolling (laughs) for the fleshliness of the God-forsaken walking man. She's like, oh, Lord, mercy, mercy, mercy. No. No. Follow me, follow me, follow me. We ain't even drinking rum today. I'm making myself laugh at your expense. I'm I'm just trash. I'm trash. You are. It's so funny, though. Grade Um, A flaming. So the muse said. Hot garbage. The muse said that no. She was actually on the train trying to find a church home. Trying to find the Lord. And, okay. yeah, now I want to jump back on that because the church yes. is, to me, the next most obvious plug yeah. for building black community. Absolutely. I grew up in a church called the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Ooh. also known as AME. Shouts out to all my YP dears out there. That's our youth auxiliary. Oh. Um, you grew up in a Baptist church or not a Missionary Baptist. Missionary Baptist. Yes, Lord. Not to be confused. And yeah, just you know, seek out your your local black denominations or black non denominations. Yeah. If that's your, your thing, your kojic, your if holiness, your, your apostolic, yeah. Seventh Day of Venice, yeah. whatever you do. But that is a really great place because yeah. I think what you're gonna find then is people who are like minded to you too. If you you know do the church thing, if that's your thing, yeah. yeah. And then everybody, you know, the church is gonna cut across a lot of demographics. You're gonna have yeah. kids, parents, singles. Mary, organizations, they like musicians. Yeah, all the all the key, m- most times, majority of the times, like the key people, depending on which church you just you you choose, um, like the key movers and shakers gonna be in church sometimes, like the old 
head ones. Yeah, absolutely. Least. But you got to find that, that power church in yeah, town for that. Yeah, do. And now, I kind of don't even like believe in all that. I think it's kind of antithetical to Christ's teachings if, you t- if we're talking about mm, Christianity. Antithetical. But that's another day's conversation. That's a $50 word on his $5 couch. I'm trying to get a promotion on Venus Clapback. My couch is not $5. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to pretend like this is the studio couch. This couch Oprah got us is not $5. <laughs> the real call that is, I thought, mm-mm. <laughs> Since I'm out here shaking what my mama gave me, light rail. Oh, okay. You got me back. You got me. She got me back. That's fine. Lord, mercy, mercy, mercy. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted a reason to sing that song. But yeah, I mean, yeah. those power churches in town, like for instance, here in Phoenix, it's Tanner Chapel AME. Uh, and it's funny because Tanner Chapel is not a big church, mm-hmm. but it's the church where some of the main movers and shakerers yeah. go. I'm telling you. Like that whole little strip. Yeah, the whole Washington. strip. So First Institutional Baptist Church and then the church in terms of just the biggest um, congregation is a Pilgrim's Rest Baptist Church. With the young adult population. Yeah, yeah young for adults sure. for sure. And so what you want to do in your town is ask around, find out what are the main churches people go to. Because even if you're not going to join, you still need to attend that church to figure out what's what in the community. See who goes there. Talk to people. Look around. Yeah. Don't be sitting in the pew just looking straight forward. Look around. You yeah. know, talk to some people. See who got on a Delta shirt. See who hair look good. Ask them where they get their hair done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and this is the this is probably old 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 school. It's traditional, what? but um, I don't know how how many like newer school churches do this, but some mm-hmm. churches still do it. But when they ask for visitors, <laughs> stand your ass up. Stop being shy. And say, like, where you're from and, you know, if you just moved there, whatever. I know, I know, I know it's mad awkward. I know it's mad awkward. It but is. what happens at the end of service is, yo, did you say you was from Mississippi? Yo, did you say you was from South Carolina? I know this, I know that. Oh, you went to Jackson State, you went to Howard. Okay, we got an alumni meeting tomorrow. Like, it, it immediately starts. Yep. Like, it really, really, like, immediately starts. So if you can weather the storm and stand up when they ask for visitors, will there be one? You should be that one. Such good advice. Say something. Stop being shy. Say yeah. something. Yeah. I was thinking about shake something. No, don't shake nothing. But say something <laughs> when they call for the visitors. And this is how you know when you're at an old school church. Mm-hmm. I've been to a church before, like, the smaller ones, where they do the call for visitors. And if you don't stand up, they know you a visitor. They know you a visitor. It's only, like, 50 people in go- there. And they go like this. <laughs> right in your face. <laughs> is you gonna stand up or is you ain't? Like, get on up, baby. Get on up. Get on up. Go Tell ahead. Them. Tell them. Go ahead. And if it's really small and you happen to, to be visible from the pulpit, the minister might even point you out. Especially if it's a so, small church. Yeah. Uh, ma'am. Ma- uh, ma'am. <laughs> with the hair. Ma'am. Get, get, get on up and tell us how in good God's been dress. to you. Tell us who y'all. In the peach dress. Mm-hmm. Why don't you stand up? Everybody wearing black and you sitting there in peach. You know it's you. <laughs> it's just you, sis. Go on, stand up. Stand up. Yes. Let them know where you come from. That's it. Tell, and all you got to do, if you're nervous, I'm going to give you the keys right now. Write this down for the unchurched. All you got to do is start off with... First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I bring you life? greetings yeah. from, yeah. and insert name there. Wait, why am I doing that? I don't know. Insert the name of the place you came from there. Yeah, now also the muse just gave you the deluxe version. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Yeah. Now you hit him with that. You, gotta give you him a getting position. a free box dinner after church. Yeah, yeah, Somebody's yeah. getting you a takeout from the local soul food spot. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> or yeah. actually not even. You getting something from somebody's kitchen. Somebody's got a honey baked ham slice for yeah. you. But you know. And I- ultimately like the, the good thing about it. The reason why it's very very important. Is because those churches. Those black people in those churches. Were once transients just like you. Yes, they were. So they about to scoop you up real quick. When I, um, I moved here. Um, and as I was getting involved in the church, I learned that um, one of the ladies, um, they were from Mississippi, mm-hmm. um, older, much older lady and her mm-hmm. daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, yeah, come over, come on over to the house. We're going to make some chili and blah, blah, blah. Aww. And so it ended up being like um, I love that. Um, alumni of Jackson State. Like, oh, too bad. From long <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it wasn't Howard. Go ahead. From long ago. <laughs> Anyway, while I'm sitting there breaking bread with these people, I'm sitting there with this lady who has a whole building named after her on Jackson State campus. What? Yes. So that's living history. Absolutely. She's passed on RRP, but mm. like, yes. Yeah, God Just bless. Sweet. Uh, Lottie B. Thornton. Early Education Center. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And see, that's how it happens. You yep. just be there with greatness just because you stood up. Let's yep. do a demonstration for the people. 
um, ask for visitors at the church. At this time, we will open the doors of the church to recognize those heathens and those who know God for themselves to uh, let us know who they are and where they come from. Uh, uh, in front of you, you'll see a visitor's card. Feel free to fill that out and put that in the tray as the as the offering comes by you or give it to your usher. But if you do, so feel welcome. If you feel it in your heart, take some time and, you know, stand and let us know who you are at this time. Will there be one? <clears throat> That's me standing up. Uh, first, giving honor to God. Uh, I bring you greetings from the Bethel AME Church in Columbia, South Carolina, oh, okay. where uh, Reverend Ronnie Brailsford Sr. is the pastor. Oh, yeah, he good. Um, he good. He good. And, and I just moved here recently. I graduated from Howard and came here to pursue my career. Ain't you? You know, in, somebody in the church going to always, always. represent. In communications. <laughs> so I'm looking for a position um, and just excited to really, you know, connect with the church family and grow. Thank you so much for having me here today. God bless you. <laughs> Where did his voice come from? Because <laughs> I'm a sweet young Christian woman. <laughs> Little ushers, ushers gather the baskets, make sure her tithing is 20%. What? <laughs> what kind of weird church is this? All right, anyway, we're going to move on. So, it's a growing church. <laughs> black church. That's like, that's your ticket in. We just gave you the script. Yeah. Um, if, we, if that's your if thing. If that's your thing, yes. right? And hey, listen, that goes for the mosque. Yeah, that goes for the other types of worship centers, all of that. But there's and there's black Catholic churches too. Like, don't get it twisted. Where I come from in Columbia, South Carolina, there's a famous black Catholic co um, yeah. congregation called Saint Martin de Porres. Um, they have their own Catholic school, and that's kind of cool too because yeah. sometimes through the faith community, you can find great schools. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. But I we agree. talked a little bit in the first segment. Don't keep it pushing Ooh. about legacy civil rights organizations. Yep. But I'm sure some people are listening to that like, yeah, that ain't my kind of hype. Sure. And I get it, trust me. Yeah. You're a little bit more about that Black Lives Matter. You know, you're trying to figure out, okay, after we march, what next? What are the issues we advocating for? Do they have an intersectional analysis? Are they inclusive of queer folks? All of that, trans folks as well. Right, right. So you're looking for one of our newer school justice organizations, and I'm just shout out a few that may be in the area that you're in. Um, Black Youth Project, also known as BYP 100, is a really good one. Dream Defenders um, down in Florida is another great one. Um, let me see. We mentioned Black Lives Matter or Movement for Black Lives, depending on where you're mm -hmm. at. Color of Change. They're not necessarily like a chapter organization, but they organize Black Joy brunches all Ooh, over the city. Nice. Where you can get together and fellowship with the community and be hearing about what's the political and social change that needs to take place. Um, yeah, Black Alliance for Just Immigration. They have um, offices in Atlanta, um, the Bay, uh, Brooklyn, DC. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be in Phoenix, one. but it's, it, they yeah. combined with California. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They combined with California. So those are all really good organizations that have a sharp analysis of what's holding black people back from liberation as far as like criminal mm -hmm. justice or immigrant rights, queer and gender equality, all of those things. So yeah. those are a great place to build community and feel good about what you're doing along those same lines. You might just want to volunteer. Yeah. Figure out what's the organization in town that's serving people that are un who are underprivileged, especially black folks. Yeah. You know. Um, oh, another good one that we didn't even think about as we're sitting here shouting out our schools. Mm. See if your alumni, um, see if your college school, whatever, has like an alumni chapter mm -hmm. in your new city. That's right. Like, and even I if you didn't go didn't to an HBCU, yeah. go into an alumni reception. Don't search for, your... for it if you didn't go to an HBCU. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I disagree. Like, if you went to a PWI. Don't worry about it. Then your alumni group you might made your have decision. black folks in it. You made your decision. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> But no, nah, PWI, HBCU, see if your your um, your school has like an alumni chapter in your new city. And that's another way to be in. Because then this is like, I don't want to sound classes or whatever, but like now you're with like other, at least college, um, co other college graduates that yeah. may or may not have a career out here. And then that's like an end for some job moves, some interviews, like whatever. Yeah. That's even, a good way to move. I, I think it's not classes at all because it's just people that you have that shared experience with and okay. y'all can build it together. Yeah. Like I know for Howard, I can't speak for these other schools, but Howard definitely 
<laughs> I'm joking. I know this is true for every HBCU in particular. We look out for each other. Yeah. You hear that somebody, in fact, honestly, I think HBCU grads look out for HBCU grads in many Absolutely. cases. Absolutely. And I think that that works for PWIs too. You know, I've seen people bond over the fact that they both attended Arizona State University or yeah. Northern Arizona, et cetera, et cetera. So look up, so look up your schools and I'm not club. That's, yeah. a, that's a major key. Yeah. Another major key I want to make sure we cover is some of these publications. So like the Muse in the first segment, you shouted out like Phoenix New Times, yeah. phxsoul.com. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure I get that shout out right because they're you know yeah. big supporter of the podcast. So yeah. shouts out to Tremaine and PHX Soul. Arizona but, Informant is another good yeah, one. Yeah, Arizona Informant locally, right, is yeah. our black newspaper. Yeah. So every city, mm-hmm. believe it or not, is probably going to have a black newspaper, even if it's not like a well-known one. If you do a little digging, yeah. do a little Googling, Black Newspaper, Peoria, Illinois, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. will find the one that's closest to you, and that's going to be a golden resource yeah. of what's happening because these black newspapers are going to cover the stories and organizations that people that nobody else is covering. Exactly, especially events and where you can actually link up with those folks too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure. And there's usually probably some type of urban events website, and if not a website, an Instagram account that you can follow, you know, Black in Tucson or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's not a real thing, but, you know, something be, similar to that. Yeah. Urban AZ, I know is a real <laughs> one. If it's not, we need to make it. Trademark that. Um, but, you know, Las Vegas Soul is another one that yeah. is out there I, I know of where you can find out what's the urban events happening on the Strip and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, make sure that you plug into those websites and those social media accounts sign up for their email list when you go yeah. email list when you go to those websites they'll say subscribe here or sign in here put your little email address in so you can get the email alerts about the you know the cruise party the day party the church convention you know the yeah. black women's um business <laughs> convention the black expo yeah all of that that's coming through town also specifically like the <laughs> industry that you may be in so you may have like black engineers or mm-hmm. um, the national was it um, black accountants NABA? not black accountants um, mm-hmm. uh, the black um, MBA or something mm-hmm. like that I remember mm-hmm. what it was yep. so you may be able to find those particular groups depending on like your niche area that you're yeah you're excelling black into. public administrators is yeah. another good one I got uh, friends black journalists in. yeah that's All a big that one stuff. NABJ yeah. National yeah. Association of Black Journalists they be turning up. Mm-hmm. Um, um, another good one. Oh, I just lost it. Just that quick. Black public administrators, black engineers, black accountants. Oh, National Sales Association. I think is the name of it. It's like it doesn't sound like it's a black organization, but it's black. Mm. It's black people in sales, and they meet up a lot. Yeah. And they give you some really good like info and encouragement on how to really kill it in that sales industry. Nice. So those are really good ones. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Really good key. What else we got? Meetups. So, you know, meetup.com is one source, but you want to find those, like, niche meetups. Black photographers, black filmmakers, black business owners, black men run, black Mm -hmm. girls work out, black girls travel. You know, all of these groups, they exist in every town. They do. You know, uh, black makeup and hair is a big one here in Phoenix. um, I used to have a, a thrift meetup. Mm. that we would do every month and we would just go to different Goodwills okay. and we would just wear red t-shirts to, to the different um, Goodwill ones. And I was able to meet some really, really cool people that way too. That's what's up. Over like the shared interest. I want to say real quick, I don't know if y'all can hear this, but we got like a couple of doggies here in the house today and we, <laughs> our studio is a house. Uh, it's a house of love. And, and if you hear a little doggy noises in the background, it's okay. Just know that, you know, we love the animals and, we just gonna let no them animal be. was harmed in the taping of this episode. That's right. That's right. They're they just, were just isolated. They're just isolated. They'll be fine. Um, but yeah, black outdoors, Afro yeah. outdoors mm-hmm. is another one. You know, black people that like it, hiking stuff. I don't do none of that. Yeah, but I know that my husband and other friends of ours love doing yeah. that kind of stuff. I met a lot of great people when I was heavy into running with Black Girls Run. Mm. I met a lot of great people with that. Actually, um, you was running? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, before you... Trampled upon the earth. I was running with them. Um, <laughs> I just never heard you talk about running before. No, I used were to they, run. Were they holding out like chicken wings? And no, they, uh, girl. I used to run. I used to run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I used to run like three miles on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on mm-hmm. Saturdays, I would do like five or six miles. That's beautiful. I was like, have you seen my old pictures from like three, four years ago? I was like this big. You're not big now. I'm just, I, no, I've never heard I was, you talk about running. I was, I was 
I was you lean. Was idly biddly. I was idly biddly. And so, um, but yeah, Black Girls Run was dope. And then um, some of the women that I was running with, we, we ended up having like a picnic at Tempe Town Lake. Lake. Yep. And so we saw these women um, coming through like rowing and shit. Oh. Like just coming through killing it and mm-hmm. it, one of the ladies was a black lady mm-hmm. and so they came they pulled up the little kayak thing or whatever they call it canoe i don't know mm-hmm. um but she was with like a hawaiian rowing team or whatever mm-hmm. and so she invited me and my friend to come and so on wednesdays at 5 p.m we was out there getting that shit what? Wah, wah. it was amazing it was great i love that i, I used to be that. so athletic now i'm just here you're still athletic just no. gotta start it back up yeah, that part. I love anyway. that. I love that. But yeah, it but it was it was cool because you get a chance to like not only meet other black people doing right, and that's another tip. Like, you may have to get into some things that you didn't necessarily know that you would have to get into to meet some other black people. Because mm. I didn't think I was going to meet a black woman rowing on Tempe Town Lake, <laughs> right. or you know, or like a whole running group. I knew I enjoyed running um, back in Mississippi before I moved here. Sure, um, but I didn't know that there'd be like a whole running group of other black women that enjoy running because mm-hmm. in the South, I didn't really see it like that. No. Um, so it, it may behoove you to figure out like what your new interests are as you're moving into this new Try city. Try some new stuff. You try some new stuff and you may find like black people that are into like what, what you're into. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And let your kids try new stuff too. Yeah. I think another big source of building community is youth sports because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. inevitably you end up bonding with them other parents because yep. y'all sitting there on you the have side no line together. The kids want to They won. Damn, play. it's another game. <laughs> the kids want to play together. Can Bobby <laughs> come over, mom? Can Bobby come to the house? Right. Can Bobby sleep over? Right. Well, now I got to be friends with Bobby's parents. Yeah. And it's actually a beautiful thing. So yeah. youth sports, Pop Warner football, Little League, cheer team, gym, you know, all those things. Especially mm-hmm. if you can find like a little black league, you know, that's mm-hmm. cool. And if not Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts is mm-hmm. a big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to leave the parents out and the youths. Um yeah. I think those are, are really, really good ways to meet up with people. And as far as finding those meetups, there's meetup.com like we said, but you can also find those meetups on Facebook. Yeah. Facebook groups are actually a really good source of finding like really like-minded yeah. people with similar interests to you. Yeah. So literally go on Facebook in the search bar and type in, you know, black in Peoria. I'm gonna keep using Peoria. <laughs> type in, you it's know, it's a Peoria, Arizona too. It's so a it Peoria, work. Arizona. That's it could true. work. Type in, you know, black in Portland, yeah. wherever you may be. And literally, I guarantee you, some group is going to pop up. Now, it yeah. might only be 25 people in a group. But it's 25 or, you ain't know before. Or like black in Phoenix, it might be 14,000 in that group. And I know yeah. all them people don't live here. And I know yeah, they ain't nah. all black either. I'm sure the feds <laughs> in there creeping. But, you know, I think if you, if even if it's only 25 people in a group, that's actually better. Yeah. Because it's more likely to be actual people. Um, and it's also people that then you can actually meet up with in real life. Y'all can head mm-hmm. out to the local black owned coffee shop and whatnot, yep. or just head to the park and, and, you know, and get to know each other. Yeah. Don't sleep on Eventbrite either. That's yeah. another good little search Eventbrite. engine. Put in the little city, what it is you're looking for and mm-hmm. you'll take it out from there. But and put in your interest, Neo soul music, you know, um, open mics. Um, just whatever it is that you enjoy, put mm-hmm. that in there and you'll be able to, you know, find people. So in this last segment that we're about to get into, we're going to go deep. All right. We're going to talk about how you not only just find black people, but now how do I build? You know what I'm saying? New pyramids are waiting to be built. How do we get to it? Okay. Too much? I, I'm, I, got my I don't care. Up. Pyramids, y'all. I'm All right, we got a legacy. <laughs> we trying to get to the space. Stars, sky, spaceships don't have rearview mirrors. They dip. I messed up the lyrics. I'm starting to see spaceships on Bankhead, but whatever. <laughs> how you do we do get? It? How do we reach new heights? You yeah. know, you might have a small business you're trying to grow. You might be a talented professional. You might just be somebody that's trying to get your hustle on and you want to figure out how to build. Nobody going to build with you like your people. Yeah. Don't listen to that hype that says, you know, don't, don't work with black people. That's internalized white supremacy. Nah. We'll talk about it in season three. Right <laughs> now, I want you to understand that in order for us to build, we got to build together. <laughs> yes. Because a hand may be strong, but nothing as mighty as a fist. That unity, baby. The fingers together, they're balled up. And cut. <laughs> Come back for uh, episode, I mean, uh, segment three of Venus Clapback, the rose that grew from concrete. Somebody out there feels me. Where you are right now, just say amen. See you in the next segment. <laughs>
That's us. I'm Coco. And I'm your muse. And before we go, we just want to make sure that you fully get the message regarding being a rose that can grow in concrete. In other words, a black person or person of color who finds yourself in a very, very white environment. Concrete space. Nonetheless is looking for joy <laughs> and uh, relationship. Mm-hmm. And not just dating, but like, you know, all levels of relationship. Community. Friendship, support, yeah. all that. So we talked about a whole bunch of settings where you can really go and figure out what's what with black community. I'll add a few more. Sure. Um, and then we'll talk about how to insert yourself once you get into those settings. We gave you a really good crash course on how to get, you know, get into that black church environment. We gave you the literal script. But there's more to it than that mm-hmm. for some other environments. But real quick, I think one another spot people can look into is comedy shows. Mm-hmm. Like, as silly as that sounds, when you end up sitting at that table with that two-drink minimum, and, you, and you're and you forced to get you a little sauce in your system if Listen. you do that, and you loosen up, you're going to make friends probably with them people at that table with real you. Real talk. It has happened to me. So yeah. I definitely recommend going and checking out those urban comedy shows and music festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, check out those music festivals in town, not yeah. just the concerts. Because the cool thing about a festival is there's downtime. You're moving from stage, stage to stage. You're kind of in between in the meantime, and you're connecting with folks. Yeah. I definitely have met, um, I was telling y'all uh, earlier, I just mm-hmm. recently met um, a young lady. I was going to the Phoenix Afrobeat Orchestra um, event that was at Crescent Shout Ballroom. Out. A little free ad time. And I was just chilling at this table, <laughs> and this girl came comes up, and she was just like, can I just sit here? I'm just going to eat. And I was like, well, I'm not eating. You can definitely, you know, come mm-hmm. cop, uh, cop a squat. Mm-hmm. And um, we just got to talking, and she told me what her name was, and she just moved here from Chicago and all this other kind of stuff. So I was like, let me hurry up and wrap you in <laughs> to, to let me give you the black tour on social media, like mm-hmm. who you need to be following and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so... I, went, I was going to her Instagram, and I, was, of course, was about to plug Venus clap back at, up at the top. But she was already following us. She was like, I already follow you guys. I just followed you guys, blah, blah, blah. Poor soul. And I was like, that is dope. So then I plugged her with some other, like, event pages and stuff like that. Like, this is where you need to go. This is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. And the band's going to be great. And it was really cool, like, meeting her like that. And I met, like, a lot of great people. Just because I, I tend to kind of, like... Be on my own a lot too. Love it. And Say it one more um, time. on my own. That was good. That, that was, was real good. good. Mm-hmm. I, I heard the vibrato. Mm-hmm. Yes. You yes. better give them a run. Yeah. I was I was channeling my time. You Tony better. Business. Thank you. Y'all getting premium content today. Y'all need to run yeah. this episode back. Get down get down again. That piece will only be on Patreon. <laughs> So <laughs> patreon.com slash just, just for that run for premium content just uh-huh. for that run um but not like just venturing out by myself but I'm, I can be kind of like a loner sometimes so like if that's like your thing just like if you live downtown or in like a like a heavy walkable area just I'm get say, out there rent your little bike and go go even hit the if corners it's not and, your and thing yeah get on out there by yourself it can be a little scary if you're it's not used scary, to hanging out by try yourself it. just try it yeah. Cause I think I I love that because it gives you a chance like to really just see what stimulates you. Yeah. Like you're not wrapped up in what's stimulate stimulating everybody around you. You know. Oh well, she's turning up to that. Okay, I guess I'll turn up too. She's drinking mm-hmm. that. I'll drink that too. She's you enjoying find that. Out no, you don't no. even like that. You song. find out what Coco likes. You mm-hmm. find out what the muse likes when you out there rolling solo dolo. Exactly. And I love even now. I love it when I'm out and about. Like you and I were at a brunch this weekend, mm-hmm. and there was a young lady at our table who's yeah. there by herself. Yeah, she was from the Bay. Said she just turned twenty eight, and she was just at the table talking to us. And she came in by herself, and she, she left did. by herself having a good time. And I love to see that mm-hmm. because I just feel like that's black girls being brave, adventurous, courageous, and just really regular, doing our thing, yeah. carefree, yeah. and not needing to like be paired up or coupled up with somebody to go out and feel good. Yeah, so I love it. Do that, yeah. y'all. I think that's the roll number solo one. Sometimes be able to roll solo. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, but I understand that some people are shy. That's I get fine. that. I get it. I used to but, love strolling the streets of New York by myself. Mm, I just, I'm sorry. I went down memory lane real quick. You did. But, Your eyes like over here. Because I would go to like a museum or a library. Oh, and yeah. I think that's another good way to yeah, find out what's sure. what with a new community mm-hmm. is to go and get into those kind of like yeah. cultural arts institutions. Mm, I agree. I'm not a part of these things, but even like the black Greek um fraternity sorority things Mm -hmm. you'd have to go into that because i am not um i'm not worthy of saying those names are you kidding you're just not a regular human you're worthy you're just not i'm I'm just a citizen (laughs) 
What, what about them? What about them? But that's a great way to like connect. So oh, yeah. if you know of some of your other sorority sister and fraternity brethren or whatever, <laughs> then like link with them. Yeah. And yeah. Um, let them know or get back reinvolved. I, right. Um, I hear my friends say like I ain't a paying member like so whatever that means start paying or something I don't know um, <laughs> Shade. I don't know is that yeah. you Coco I don't know no that was accurate you know don't be I, I wasn't I, talking about you though oh me oh we're not getting into my business but I think I think ultimately when I hear people say I have I don't know anybody in my town yeah. and they're Greek I'm a little confused yeah because it's ready made it's it like is. laid out the sandwich is. bread is there the mayo is on one side the mustard especially, is on the other especially all you got to do is put it together especially if that town has a, a four year college yeah like that's that it is a little concerning for me yeah and in most towns especially I don't Delta AKA and Zeta are really big especially mm-hmm. Delta and AKA every podunk city in America. <laughs> Every county in America has an alumni chapter of, yeah. you know, the Divine Nine for sure. Uh, most of them. Yeah. So, you know, don't, even if you had a bad experience in college, the people that did you wrong in college, they back there in that town. If you're they in don't. a new place, go ahead and hook up with that alumni chapter in your new town. You'll probably be pleasantly surprised. I agree. Another good one that I've gotten some some good information from is like locally owned black businesses as well, mm. especially the hair store. Now the what now? The hair store. <laughs> I don't the necessarily hair store. The hair store. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't. Well, for me, it's kind of like a distance thing or whatever. But going to the the hair stores or black hair yeah. um, hair care areas, mm-hmm. like that's another way to kind of like get in on it. Because what do you see at the, at the black hair store? Mm-hmm. You see business cards, you see flyers, advertisements Absolutely. for other stuff. Uh, other stylists, other barbers, babysitting services, <laughs> braiders, l- braiders, all of that stuff. Like you see everything you need. Ooh, insurance. Ooh, ooh. Major key <laughs> just dropped that bulletin board. Yeah, basically, it's either up at the cash register or sometimes they got a bulletin board. And bulletin boards are gonna be major, even at the coffee shop. There's mm-hmm. bulletin boards. Oh yeah, at other black owned businesses. But I'm sorry, back to the hair store. No, yeah, they they lay it all out there for you right there on the counter as you're getting ready to swipe your card. It mm-hmm. just be right there like call LaQuisha for your um consultation for your for your insurance it's right there call Mike for your silicone butt shots yep with quick Crete. yep <laughs> it's all right there <laughs> quick Crete. oh my lord but Everything yeah it's it's, it's it's all laid out there right 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 there for you and then um typically in black owned businesses um depending on the, the size and scale of them like you're able to sort of, um communicate with the actual owner for the yes. most part um and they can give you the keys on like where, if um, where other people are that you're that you're wanting to do. I remember um, one time in the studio we had this. Um, <laughs> usually at the studio at this point, people probably know what my business is. But at the studio when I teach, I don't typically I don't say I'm the owner. Okay. I'll just start teaching the class. Okay. And so this one particular time, it was like a class full of white people and um there was this black couple in there and mm. at the time me and my friend were doing mars and venus conversation socials and so um at the end they came up and they was whispering like is this yo is this your studio and i was like yeah it's my studio mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. they're like oh we didn't know we just we we here for, i can't they're from somewhere in the midwest and like, well mm-hmm. we we just moved here we don't see too many black owned businesses so we didn't know who to ask we didn't know what to do <laughs> yeah 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 we don't know where to go blah 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 mm-hmm. and so i was like yeah and so i was just like yeah. i was like let me give you the keys and i invited mm-hmm. them to the next mars and venus conversation thing and um and they came to that and they were able to meet some like some other couples and stuff like that so you you just never know like if you get That's if right. you get to the owner or the organizer or like the key point communicating person of the joint like they'll, they'll give you the that's, keys. A, that's a major key yeah. and i'm gonna have an unpopular addition to that sure if you're really new in town and you really don't know nobody <laughs> maybe volunteer some services for some small black owned businesses mm. you know if you're a person that does finance or you do um you know some type of creative arts or something like that hey do y'all i noticed y'all sign was falling apart out front yeah do you need some help i'm actually an illustrator or i, mm. I have the connect you know to yeah. a great printing company or i can just give you some tips i yeah. can just give you some pointers maybe we could have lunch talk to you about your social media strategy make, make sure your heart and your intentions are, are pure though because right. <laughs> i've had some people do that and yeah. mm, mm, what mm. they tried to scam you I don't know, but the heart and the intentions weren't pure, so the energy went right for me. So I said, "What? Nah, they was I'm trying good. to smash you? What? 
No, it, but <laughs> in business, it's, that's it's just like a. We'll leave it. We'll we'll leave that for another episode. It's just kind of like a. It's it's a it's a. It's a thin line between, between love and sincerity hate. and being a fucking scammer. Okay. Like, and then um, like I said, I can't remember what episode we were in, but just like. People want to pick your brand, and, I, and all of a sudden they want to like help. I, I used to get this a lot when I had my fashion business, and people mm-hmm. would be like, "Oh well, let me let me come and like help you out, and let me do this, and and, and I'll do this." And it's like, but there's no leverage because not to be like an asshole, but nobody knows you here. So how are you essentially like? How's am that, I being how, mean? How's that not being an asshole? I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe so. That's fine. I think it depends but it's, on but the industry. In I, fashion, I, I think it depends no, on the you're, services you're, you claim you're, you're trying to volunteer. You're, your feelings are totally valid. <laughs> Let me stop playing. You're totally valid. In fashion and oh, entertainment, yeah, I can it's take different. this to my group. Group of what? Right. You just been if, here two if weeks. In fashion and entertainment, it is a whole different animal. Yeah, like so. you know, I, I sing, it depends on what you need. I used to be a, a really really famous singer, not, but I used to be like she more into the indie singing scene. Yeah. And you right. People would come. I'll never forget when I first got to Phoenix. This dude was like, "Yeah." So I helped create the Beastie Boys, um, and I brought together. I helped actually found Def Jam. I was there with Russell Simmons, but he didn't put me, you know, into the story and whatnot. But you know what I'm saying. And my lion producer Brian. The Force MDs. Oh, <laughs> the Force MDs, not the Beastie Boys. He was to me for like 45 this minutes. guy was talking yeah. to me for 45 mm-hmm. minutes. It was light and then it got dark. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to escape with my life, so I feel you. Like people will definitely yeah. come and try to sell you a dream if you're in a creative arts field. Yeah. So don't be that person. Don't but be that person. But as far as these like small like mom and pop brick and mortar type businesses, yeah. network with them, help them build. If nothing else, support those black businesses yeah. and that you know support will that karma will come back yeah. to you first and, of all and, and, and you'll be is, building um, community and this is another good opportunity to meet people um in in phoenix at least but this that's how archwood exchange got started okay because our monthly um, black business marketplace yeah because that's Shouts how out. ali would just go around when he got um wind of the new black businesses he's just like okay and then he just go live live stream and from their um you know then um but this is also with phoenix llc and that's another good um activist um, yeah local organizing committee justice yeah. or else look yeah. for that in your town too. Um, really but that's place. essentially how they got started just going in and um not necessarily quote unquote volunteering their services but it's like you know what i can, i may not be able to buy a product right now whatever whatever but i can get on this live and tell my people though and my people come through like i know that for sure so absolutely you can find your creative ways of of giving back just don't be that shysty shady ass person other business business owners will agree like we we get people wanting to volunteer and I, if you need somebody to help you with this well, we get that all the time and that's great like t- truly truly appreciate it but sometimes the energy just don't be right and you have to pass on that option. <laughs> yeah. absolutely so don't be afraid to offer up some help yeah i think also another good one that you might want to think about doing is even taking a class in town or classes are good. Teaching a class. Yeah. Right? If you specialize in some particular area, go and see down at the Chamber of Commerce or the Black Chamber of Commerce. Hey, do y'all need somebody to teach a photography class? Do y'all need somebody mm-hmm. to teach a social media marketing class? Yeah. Do y'all need somebody to teach a public speaking class? A business plan class. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. You know, whatever those skills are that you utilize at work, sow those back into the black business and small business community. Um, cause most of the time when you support small and local businesses, you're supporting, supporting black and Latinx and Muslim and Asian owned businesses anyway, by yeah. virtue of staying local. So, you know, pour your skills back out and you will set yourself up as an expert, yeah. as like a subject matter expert in your town. And people will be like, Oh, you know what? I went to a class where the muse was talking about, um, reusable fashion and sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she might be willing to come and partner with my organization yeah. or come and teach an adjunct professor class you know at my community college etc yeah. etc all kinds of worlds of opportunities can, can yeah. open up for you or maybe it's just a cute ass dude in the audience that's like damn she's smart and fine i want to take her out to lunch like anything can happen the sky is the limit yeah just follow that, that reading rainbow his name is sky <laughs> his name is sky you know what i'm saying he'll be my boyfriend by christmas <laughs> Um, new movie from Black with Riverland. that and what and what I've done as well is um, the social media opportunity now I know sometimes it can be a little creepy 
But sliding into the DMs, like when you're new to a place, once you've kind of like got a lay of the land, of course, and yes. you're actually friends with these people on Facebook, don't be a creeper, right? right. But if these people are m- moving and doing the things that you kind of want to do, mm-hmm. like slide in their DMs and be like, hey, when's the next one? I want to I wanna come. I'm new here. I don't really have a lot of friends or family or whatever, but I'm really digging what you're doing. Yep. You know, let me know when the next event is coming when the next event is coming up and I want to, you know, slide through. That's that's always a good one too. Absolutely. Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slide into those DMs and just don't give out your like super personal info off top. Yeah, no. But you know, find out what's going no, on. No, just keep it real you basic. In. You're interested in, you like what the, you like what you see is happening. The when's fashion the next show is meeting? coming up. Okay, when's the next fashion show? And like, if they, res- don't worry if about they respond, oh, well, you know, where, what side of town you on? I could just meet up with you. No, no just tell just me, tell me when at. the next meeting is and I'll come through. Yeah. Safety first, especially for the yeah. ladies. Yeah, we ain't, um, we ain't doing all that. I wanted stuff. to mention too, if you're not into like the whole getting up in front of a crowd thing, mm-hmm. we've mentioned some people are shy, then maybe you can mentor. Yeah. You know, maybe you can find out the local university if they have like a student chapter of the Association of Black Journalists or NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers. All of those organizations have college level mm-hmm. chapters too. Absolutely. So maybe you can go, like I did this one actually when I first got out here, this was a big help for me. Um, one of my Delta sisters hooked it up, but I ended up getting to lecture and I still do it every once in a while in the School of um, Communications, Walter Cronkite School of Communications at ASU, where I just go and talk to a class about, you know, how do you set up a campaign or Mm -hmm. different types of like advertising and communications tests. Um, But in doing that, I also then got to network with other people who were black people in particular, but who were faculty there at ASU and just other people who were just like, oh, you, you know, you seem kind of smart. Maybe we can pull you in on things. So that mentorship, whether it be a class or one to one of another student, is also going to come back around to you. If you don't feel like if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then go get yourself a mentor, right? Find out who are the people that do what it is you want to be doing yeah. in town and slide into those DMs yeah. and find out if somebody is willing to just meet up and, and talk about that the landscape for that field in your community. Speaking of mentor, and I just learned this um, with the, the YP event that we had um, That's for the Western League Young Professionals. Yeah. Um, but also find out the minority groups at your job. Yeah. Oh, the um, that's affinity another, groups. Yeah, yeah that, that's mm-hmm. the proper word for it. But mm-hmm. those work out really, really well. And I didn't know that they existed mm-hmm. within, within like the corporate world. It depends on where you're working for, who you're working for. Yeah, Bank of America but, has the black professional group, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. We they to, all have them. Um, we went to GoDaddy. GoDaddy has one. Okay. Um, Intel, Intel has one. Tesla. And then there was another no, one. I don't know if Tesla um, has one. <laughs> which other one did we go to? GoDaddy, Intel. And it was another... Um, tech company that we went to that had um, those affinity groups. Uber. We went to Uber. Mm-hmm. And they had those affinity groups, they which is one. really, really dope. And yeah, they're doing a lot of work over Yeah, there. most big corporations do. So plug yeah. into that at your job. Yep. And they have women's, um, like, gender-based mm-hmm. affinity groups. Yep. All of that. Yep. So that is a good one. I think when you get into these community areas and you're finding your people, another one you might want to try is to support black art. Right. So we talked about going to the comedy show, but sometimes it's other types of arts that black people are doing, Um, like indie artists, um, whether it be visual arts or singers, rappers, painters, um, just any types of like fine yeah. arts that black people are doing, go check it out. You see yeah. somebody's doing an art show, you, don't be that person. Well, who is it? Who is she? I never heard of her. Well, you ain't got I that privilege. I never heard of him. You ain't got that privilege if you knew in the city. Okay. It don't matter. You just better, go. You better get in the audience and cheer. <laughs> if you don't like what you hear, just bounce. Right. You ain't got the boo. Right. You, it's not the right. Apollo unless you had the and Apollo. And you, you'd be surprised, which was my surprise yeah. when, when I moved here, is that um, although we're trying to give you the keys of where you can find the other black people, I think I think I said this earlier though, mm-hmm. but like you may just have to go to some places that may not be, you know, like overtly a black space. Mm-hmm. And find um, that there's black people there that are doing different things as well. You, it's always gonna be at least one of us at the oh, open yeah. mic, yeah, 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 <laughs> or in an arts environment. Yeah, it's sure. gonna be one of us there, and we might not be doing urban music either. Yeah. It's but it, you can go to the folk open mic. It's gonna be <laughs> one brother, Scott Barnes, is gonna be there with his <laughs> guitar. <laughs> no diggity. 
yeah. we're multifaceted very, very people yeah. okay we do yeah. all kinds of things yeah so yeah go support art support independent artists and i guarantee you'll build community that way too i have a friend that any indie soul artist that comes to town um where she lives she's going to the show just yeah. off gp but most of all, the biggest thing I think you're going to have to do if you're trying to build community, and this goes for any person of any race, you're going to have to talk to some strangers. you got to talk to some strangers. And <laughs> we've mentioned here a couple times that, you know, you may be shy, this and that, about going out by yourself or what have you. You're going to have to talk to some tra- strangers. You're going to have to talk Don't to some Don't be that strangers. person in the corner with the IV of vodka hooked up to your arm, <laughs> hoping that the more you drink, the less people will notice you. Right. It's right. actually quite the opposite. Right. Like, your girl is falling off her bar stool. I don't exactly. know Ooh. what's happening. And over there, I had one of those, you, and then now not you got me. a reputation, not me, but it happened, and it was, it was bad. It's all bad, right? Yeah. So, build up your courage, practice on the phone with maybe your friends that you're comfortable with, yep. um, or don't feel like you have to strike up conversation, just go and start off with hey, hi, hello, yeah. Because that'll get you a long way. Yeah. But, y'all, we have been in here for a while now, dropping these major jewels and keys and plugs and whatnot, and we got to go. But I hope that you gained something useful today and you go out and you find somebody and you say to them, hey, won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? (laughs) And I hope it works out. Let us know, you know, let us know what it's like in your city. If it's hard to build community and how you were able to break through and find your black joy. Any uh, closing thoughts or words from you, Muse? I ain't got none. Even if your first words... Is it like, hey, how you doing, whatever, whatever. Just be sure to just mention what the actual experience is that you're doing. And that'll help to break the ice. Like, that's a dope painting, huh? Because obviously it is. All right, y'all. So thank you so much for hanging with us today um, here on Venus Clapback to talk about being a rose that can grow and thrive in concrete and build black joy. Muse, thank you for being our constant source of black joy here on the show. To the crew here, thank y'all for shining a light on our black joy that we try to create as Venus Clapback. And I hope that all of y'all listening will take that joy and carry it out into your community and help somebody else find theirs. Until next time, I am Coco. I am your neighbor. And this is Venus Clapback. See you next time. Bye.